Uh, looks like Quidditch to me. Maybe you see Harry Potter somewhere there in the mass. just left my hotel here in Beijing it's close to lunchtime this morning the pollution uh, was so bad um, based on the website uh, that uh, indicates pollution the particle pollution index was at about three to four hundred actually close to 500 in some places here in Beijing and uh, if I were to compare that to um, Singapore, to be careful here that the cars don't run over me. If I, could, if I were com to compare this to Singapore, when we had haze uh, in the past year, so the haze is typically when the rainforest burns down in Indonesia or Malaysia and the smoke is blown into Singapore so it can be very bad really just like a foggy day um, and at its worst I think we had a pollution of about 300 in Singapore and it was just impossible to go out and it smelled like smoke essentially just as if you were next to a fire and so this morning here we're talking close to 500 now luckily um, right now it's down to about 115 so that means it has gone from hazardous to unhealthy. I think it has to do with the wind. It's quite windy now, so this cleared the air and I don't need to wear a mask. So that's great. It actually doesn't smell bad, the air, so I think I'll be fine. No one else, I'm here, I'm here. No one else wears masks. Now I'm gonna look for a place to have lunch and after that i'm going to try to get my train ticket uh, for tomorrow's trip from beijing to mongolia ulaanbaatar which will take me about 18 hours or so no sorry about 30 hours so one and a half days um or 36 hours even so um i'll talk more about that tomorrow but uh, for now i have to get my ticket uh, it's been quite a quest to get this ticket. I wrote about it on my blog if you want to know more about how to get a train ticket um, for the Trans-Mongolian. But in short, uh, it took me about 25 emails back and forth for something that should have been as simple as buying the ticket online and printing it out like I did for Russia. Uh, so it took me 25 emails discussing with uh, some nice lady here at this agency um, who is trying to help out but obviously their processes aren't very smooth and until today uh, I don't know exactly what sleeping berth or cabin I will have um, on this first leg of the trip but I do have a confirmation that I have a, a seat uh, or a bed so I'm not too worried uh, so I'll be able to make my way so for today, I just need to make sure I find the travel agent and I get my ticket. And with that, I'll be set for tomorrow. things to notice here is there are many cyclists um, there are also many of these electric bikes or motorbikes and from what I can see motorbikes seem to be forbidden here in Beijing like in most major Chinese cities so 
talking about motorbikes that run on fuel. Um, so there's plenty of electric motorbikes. And in a way that's nice because uh, you typically have a lot of motorbike traffic in cities um, that are congested. And it adds a lot to the pollution and to the noise pollution. Whereas here, things are just very calm and quiet. No noise, really hardly any noise from the street and even the cars seem to be quiet simply because they can't drive very fast here. So overall the noise level in the city is very low, which I enjoy. myself lucky that this worked out my first experience with a Chinese train um, now if you're wondering what's behind me here um, this is a reenactment of um, a surgery of a guy called Robert Bethew and a Canadian surgeon who came to China in the late 1930s um, as part of a uh, communist party exchange program, maybe you could call it. Um, and actually he was significant in uh, not only helping uh, people here recover, but also in training uh, doctors and nurses in China, which has led, or maybe has laid the foundation for today's um, health system in China. Um, so that's quite impressive. Now, unfortunately, um, based on what it says, um, on this plague back here in 39 during a surgery cut his finger and he later infected and he died from this infection um, so that's a tragic death for someone who came so far uh, to help others um, so now I'm uh, gonna try to find some of the more famous monuments here in Beijing, uh, such as the Tiananmen Square and um, some of the palaces um, or temples. So let's go.
there that's the monument to the people's heroes and then back here is Tiananmen and um, once you pass this place and go inside there is the forbidden city somewhere back there um, I don't know if I'll be forbidden to enter um, or if we're allowed to enter into the forbidden city so we're gonna find out today ceiling as you can see uh, this is a very nice ancient construction actually the whole area here is impressive how well it is maintained um, and um, what's interesting here in this park is that there's literally tens and 20 maybe 30 couples who are getting married and are taking photos here so this is really a hot spot for photo taking uh, for your wedding album next time as a group try to run not only at the same pace but also at the same cadence okay left foot right foot left foot right foot and see how far you get
is the right station. Um, so let's hope I do end up in the right station. The train is leaving in about an hour. Um, so just in case um, I have a bit more time left uh, to find my way around. Um, so I'm excited to go on to this first leg of my train journey today, direction Mongolia. Uh, it'll take a bit over a day to reach Ulaanbaatar. I'm not sure um, I will see some amazing sights uh, as I'm crossing China uh, into Inner Mongolia and then Outer Mongolia. And here it is, the Beijing Railway Station. K23 727. I don't know what that means. Uh, K45 maybe? It doesn't sound plausible. I'm surprised to see that this is a bunk bed. Uh, let's hope I can get the lower one. There's a seat here table and 